Hello everyone, welcome to my FRED tutorial series. In this video we will have a look at the ships editor of the FRED2 free space mission editor because it will be one of the first editors you will see when you start creating your own missions. Ok, let's start with the fields in the upper area of the ships editor. Ship name and ship class are quite self-explanatory. Ship name is especially important for larger ships like cruisers or destroyers which have a unique name while fighters and bombers usually have a wing based name. We'll talk about that when we come to the topic of wings. AI class determines how good the AI for this ship shall be. It is given as a set of ranks. The higher the rank, the better the AI. Team specifies how the ship shall react to other ships and the player in particular. All ships that are allied to the player should be in the friendly team, while ships on the hostile team will of course attack everything on the friendly team and will be shown with a red indicator for the player UI. Hostile ships will in fact attack any ship that is not in team hostile itself. Ships in the neutral team will also be shown with a red indicator for the player UI and will attack ships on team friendly but will not attack ships on team hostile. Ships in team unknown will be shown with a purple indicator in the player UI. They won't attack anybody and they won't be attacked by anybody. Ships of team traitor will be considered enemy by all other teams and as such will be attacked by all other teams except unknown. Those ships in return consider all other teams enemy as well, including their own team members, so they will attack anyone except team unknown. Cargo specifies which cargo the ship is carrying, especially important for freighters or cargo containers of course. The alt name allows you to override the ship class, so if you want to have a ship with a custom ship class that uh, differs from its original ship class, you can use that one. Call sign is similar for the ship name and allows it to give an alternative name. The wing indication shows if the ship is part of a wing. Hotkey allows you to specify a hotkey to target this ship or ships of the same set. The persona list allows you to assign a persona to this ship, which is especially important if you have named recurring characters in your campaign and voice acting and you want all the ship's transmission, including the built-in ones, to have the right voice for this specific character. Kill score is the number of points you get when you destroy that ship, which is then used to calculate when a player character gets a promotion to a higher rank. The assist percentage indicates how many of those points you get when you not destroy the ship itself, but only play a part in its destruction. So let's go on with the buttons in the upper area. The previous and next button allow you to switch through all of the ships available in this map. The delete button of course deletes the current ship. The reset button resets it to its default values, although that doesn't work quite in every situation. The weapons button. This opens an editor to select the weapons for this ship, which is especially important for fighter craft and bombers. Not so much for capital ships because their weapons can usually be left at their default values. The player orders opens a window to select which orders the player can give to that ship during the mission. The selection is quite limited for larger ships, but for fighters and bombers that's a longer list and here you can select which ones are available. The special exp or special explosion button allows you to configure a special explosion for this ship, for example if you want it to have a large and powerful explosion. Special hits is short for special hit points. Here you can configure special hit point and shield values that differ from its default. The texture replacement button allows you to replace textures of this ship's model with other textures. The most important use for this menu is with a nameplate texture that allows you to add a custom name tag that is then displayed on the ship's hull within the game. The All Ship Class button allows you to configure an alternative ship class for this ship, which is only useful in very specific situations during a campaign. The MISC or Miscellaneous button allows you to set several flags for this ship. I will not go into detail about each and every one. Some are quite self-explanatory, others are only useful in very rare situations, but the most important ones are the following. 
Destroy before mission is quite clear. Scannable allows you to scan this ship during the mission, which should be used uh, in conjunction with the cargo field from the last screen. Cargo known should then be ticked off, so you don't know the cargo before you scan. Toggle subsystems allows you to also scan the subsystems of that ship. Protected ships will not be attacked by AI controlled ships, and if you want only specific turret types to not fire on that ship, you can use the turret threats flags. The ignore for counting goals flag will exclude the ship from several counting um, script events. The escort ship flag will set the ship to appear on the escort list within the game and the priority defines how much of a priority it is to appear on that list as this list is limited to a certain number of ships that can appear at once on that list and the higher the priority is, the more likely it will be to appear on that list. Invulnerable is clear, Guardian is the smaller cousin of Invulnerable, because a Guardian ship can be damaged at first, but as soon as it reaches 1% hull strength, it will become invulnerable, except the subsystems which can still be destroyed. You could call this the plot armor flag. The flag hidden from sensors will make the ship disappear from the radar and fade in and out, and it cannot be targeted by players, but it can be targeted by AI. Stealth, on the other hand, will make the ship completely invisible on the radar and not even AI can target it. None of that make the ship invisible in the actual um, viewpoint of the player. Kamikaze ships will try and attack a target by ramming it and the damage value indicates how much damage they can inflict upon detonation. No dynamic goals means that the ship will not change behavior if it is attacked and stick to its original goals. The red alert carry status flag is a part of the so-called red alert system for missions. So if a mission is a red alert mission, it means that the status of the ships will be taken over from the previous mission. So if the previous mission had a ship of the same name, its status at the end of the mission will be used as a starting point for this mission. Affected by gravity, I could not find any documentation for this flag, so I have no idea what it does. Special warp in can be used here, but there is a more comfortable solution for that in a separate menu, so I will not talk about that here. And last but not least, for those I want to explain here, the cloaked flag then is really a cloaking device which renders the ship invisible in the mission. Okay, back to the previous screen. The initial status editor is the next button, which, as the name suggests, allows you to configure the initial status of this ship at the beginning of the mission. This includes, among others, hull integrity, shield strength, or the subsystem status. The next screen is the initial order screen, which will give the ships orders to follow until something else happens and these orders change. The TBL info button opens a screen that shows the table information for this ship, which is the original data for the configuration of this ship. And as a last, the hide queues button hides the lower portion of the screen, to which we will come now. The lower part of the ship's editor is the arrival and departure queues, which control, as the name suggests, the arrival conditions and the departure conditions for that ship. Here you can configure where the ship comes from or goes to, for example to hyperspace or subspace, or for example another ship's docking bay, and um, which delay after a certain trigger is executed for the ship's arrival or departure. You can set custom warp in parameters, for example the effect, sound and so on. And then the last, the queue, is the actual trigger when the ship shall arrive or depart. It uses a system called Symbolic Expressions or short SEXP, um, which is the standard concept in the thread editor to define triggers or events or whatever you want to call it. We will see those sex piece a lot during several editors within Fred, but in particular in the events editor where they have the front and center stage, and there we will talk about them in detail. Here just the short version. You can uh, replace the true and false um, value operators by other conditions to control when the ship shall arrive, if it is there at the mission start already, a bit later, or if it just arrives if a certain condition is met. And the same goes for the um, departure queue, where you can control 
Under which condition this ship shall depart the mission. Okay, 10 minutes pass and I have just talked about one editor, but this one is one of the more complex editors in this um, application. The others are quite simpler, except the events editor. If you want to have a look at the documentation of all those editors in detail, the link to the FRED documentation from the Diaspora project is in the video description, so you can have a look at it there. And in the next video we will have a look at the next editor, which is the Wings editor. Thank you so far for watching, see you again in one of my next videos if you like to. Until then, take care and goodbye.